Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. When people talk about the economy, one of the first indicators you hear about is the unemployment rate. But have you ever wondered what this rate actually means? How is it calculated, what different types of unemployment are there, and why should we care about it? In this video, we're going to break down these questions and explore why the unemployment rate is such a critical measure of economic health. Let's dive in. Section 1, Definition. Unemployment is a condition where individuals who are willing and able to work cannot find jobs despite actively seeking employment. Economists track this through various measures to gauge the overall health of the economy. Understanding unemployment is essential, as it reflects both the productivity and the well-being of a nation's workforce. Section 2. How to Measure Unemployment the official unemployment rate is calculated monthly in the United States by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS. This process involves following steps. Step 1. The Current Population Survey, CPS. Each month, the Census Bureau conducts the CPS, interviewing over 60,000 households to gather data on the employment status of everyone 16 years and older. The responses determine three classifications. Number 1. Employed, which refers to people who worked in the past week or were temporarily away from their jobs. Number 2. Unemployed, which refers to people who didn't work in the past week but were available and actively looking for a job in the past four weeks. Number 3. Not in the labor force, which refers to individuals who are neither working nor actively looking for work, such as retirees or discouraged workers. Step 2. Calculating the labor force. The labor force consists of individuals who are either employed or unemployed, but actively looking for work. So, if there are 150 million employed people and 10 million unemployed people actively seeking work, the labor force would be 160 million. Step 3. Calculating key rates. From this data, the BLS calculates two rates. Number 1. The unemployment rate, U3. This is the most commonly cited rate and represents the percentage of the labor force that is unemployed. For instance, if there are 10 million unemployed people and 100 million in the labor force, the unemployment rate would be 10%. Number 2. Labor force participation rate. This rate reflects the percentage of the working age population that is actively engaged in the labor force. For instance, if there are 165 million people in the labor force and the total working age population is 260 million, the labor force participation rate would be 63.5%. While the U-3 rate is the official unemployment rate, it doesn't capture all aspects of joblessness. The BLS also reports a broader measure known as the U-6 rate, which includes discouraged workers and part-time workers who would prefer full-time positions. For example, during economic downturns, this broader measure can show a much higher rate of underemployment, highlighting additional stress on the workforce that the standard rate may not reveal. Section 3. Types of Unemployment Economists classify unemployment into three main types, type 1. Frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment is a temporary, natural form of unemployment that occurs as people transition between jobs. It's often the result of individuals voluntarily leaving a position to find one that better aligns with their skills, career goals, or location. For example, a software developer might leave a job in one company to search for a role in another firm that offers better growth opportunities or a preferable work environment. This type of unemployment reflects a dynamic labor market where workers have the flexibility to seek roles that are a better fit. Type 2. Structural unemployment. Structural unemployment happens when there's a disconnect between worker skills and the types of jobs available. This often occurs when industries evolve or new technologies emerge, creating demand for skills that some workers may not possess. For instance, with the rise of automation in manufacturing, many traditional factory jobs have been replaced by roles requiring knowledge of robotics and programming. Workers without these new skills may find it challenging to secure employment, resulting in structural unemployment. This type of unemployment often requires retraining programs or educational initiatives to help workers adapt to changing job markets. Type 3. Cyclical Unemployment Cyclical unemployment arises from economic downturns and is closely linked to the business cycle. During a recession, consumer demand typically drops, leading businesses to cut production and lay off employees to reduce costs. For example, in the 2008 financial crisis, millions of jobs were lost across various sectors as companies struggled with decreased revenue. Cyclical unemployment tends to decrease when the economy recovers and businesses start hiring again. 
Economists consider an economy to be at full employment when cyclical unemployment is zero, meaning that the remaining unemployment is due only to frictional and structural factors. Section 4, Importance. Understanding unemployment is crucial for several reasons. Number 1. Indicator of economic health, the unemployment rate helps gauge the overall health of the economy. Higher unemployment rates generally indicate economic distress, while lower rates suggest a robust economy. For instance, in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, unemployment rates spiked dramatically, signaling a sharp economic contraction. Number 2. Policy decision-making. Governments and central banks use unemployment data to shape fiscal and monetary policy. For example, during the 2008 financial crisis, the U.S. government introduced stimulus measures, while the Federal Reserve cut interest rates to encourage borrowing and job creation. Number 3. Workforce well-being. High unemployment can lead to increased social issues, such as poverty and crime, and can have lasting effects on individuals' mental and financial well-being. Studying unemployment helps to address these broader societal impacts and improve community welfare. Section 5, Summary. To sum up, unemployment represents a critical measure of economic health, reflecting both the productivity of the economy and the well-being of its citizens. Understanding the different types of unemployment, the methods for measuring it, and the impact it has on policy and society is essential for anyone interested in economic stability and growth. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.